Hello. Welcome to Handmade by Julia Quinn, Handmade with Julia Quinn. Uh, this time I have for you a video showing you another technique using the embossing folders. This one is about a, a shabby chic vintage technique in giving texture and stuff to your cardstock, which works really nicely. This is the third of my class projects that I recently shared with my with um, my class members on, on embossing folder techniques. So this particular one here, I'm using the Hive embossing folder combined with Ranunculus Romance. This is really good for vintage projects, I think. The imagery and the background stamps and all of the little bits and pieces work really, really well. And also the ranunculus dies, which coordinate with the stamp set really well. So you've got outlines for these ones. This hello fits really nicely in that little square as well as this little, um, what would you call that? A production stamp or something. There is this great textured ranunculus flower and then a couple of extra little um, background pieces that work really nicely. Okay, now let me pop these over here. Which one do you think is the nicest? I did the first two using um, pink, petal pink and so soft run, and then I decided to use Calypso Coral for the rose on this one, which actually I really do like. And then for my card this time, I'm going to use Flirty Flamingo to see how I go with that one. Okay, let me get my pile of bits and pieces here. I've already done a little bit of stamping and preparation so that you don't have to watch all of the bits and pieces and wait. Okay, there's my card base. I'm using very vanilla this time, which is a... Uh, sometimes I forget to use very vanilla cardstock. There are so many things that work really, really well with our basic white. But oh, it, it's just such a lovely tone of colour, I suppose, especially for your vintage projects. Okay, so here's my pieces for inside the card. And I've done my die cutting there. I just have to colour those in. And these two pieces here are for my embossing folder so I can pop all those away just for a minute the first thing I have to do is some stamping and I've got a brand new pop you guys over there brand new scrap piece of paper to to do my stamping on isn't that exciting all right stamping 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 you can go over there radio so before I do the embossing on my craft cardstock i'm just going to do a little bit of stamping in the background to pick up color and just give it that more vintage look so i'm just stamping randomly with the um doesn't really matter there you go there's that okay so that's ready to go for the embossing folder and while i've got this stamp in my hand i'll just do a couple little bits for inside my card there we go Oh, actually, while I'm stamping, I'll stamp the pieces for inside my car using Just For You inside. And I'm using Soft Suede Ink as well, which is one of my favourites for vintage because it has that gorgeous sepia tone. And we'll put a little rose inside as well. There we go. Now, if you really wanted to vintage this up, you could also use your... Um, blending brush and just do on the edges should we try that this time as well I'll show you what it looks like and if it if we don't like it I'll give this to this card to someone who I'm not worried about what they think okay so I'm just going to using my blending brush there and a little bit of the soft suede just I'm only using a very light touch not much ink there we go so how does that look compared to that? It does look quite different, doesn't it? There we go. All right, while I'm sponging then, seeing I'm going all out and going really exciting this time, I'll sponge this piece of very vanilla, but not the card base, okay? So I'll just do the edges because most of this is going to be covered up by the embossing piece. There we go. 
All right. So I've vintaged it up this time. I don't think there's any more stamping to do there currently. What we do need to do is to put these pieces into my embossing folder. I think I've done these um, opposite to what my other card is. So that's going to be an interesting little... I'll just move it like that. No one will ever know. There we go. So actually with the embossing folder, you'll have one side that is embossed. That'll give you a little um, beehive hexagon bit. But on this side, it'll give divots. I'll show you when I've done it. It's a bit hard to explain. There we go. We'll just pop that in there and I'll grab my uh, embossing machine. Pop you in there and get my base platform. Put my embossing folder in here. Always with your spine first. If you don't put the embossing folder in spine first, it splits and breaks the folder because the pressure builds up as you run it along with the wheel and then it has to come out somewhere so always feed your your spine in first that way you've got the air coming out the other end and run it through and you also with your embossing folders always need to have a platform on the top it may be tempting not to worry about it but if you don't put the platform on the top what you'll do is end up curling your folder because it will curl up and around the wheel of the embossing machine as you go through okay so this is what i was trying to explain very clumsily before so can you see you've got your little hexagon shapes there on the other side it's more like pebbles okay so there's your beehive and this side is pebbles right now the next part of my vintaging up my my um, embossed panel is to add some white cardstock and my blending brush. Look at that. I've used it with other colours, obviously. But it doesn't have any colour in it except for the white, which is currently on my finger. Okay, I'm just going to add a bit of white there. And then white ink always will dry a lot lighter than what you put it onto your cardstock. So it does... Let's dry a bit and I'm just adding it on randomly there. So that's it done. Okay, I will wipe my fingers. Okay. And I will, hmm, I'm tempted to, no, I was going to say I'm tempted to stamp again because you'll see a different effect on, now which way am I going this way? You'll see a different effect when you stamp over the top. The ink is only on the raised sections. You see that? Okay, that's enough vintaging up, Julia. I'm sure. All right, let's get all this out of the way. Actually, I will use, come back here, you, and we'll do our colouring in just while I've got this platform here. Okay, as I said, I'm going to use Fruity Flamingo and Old Olive this time. So I'll just start with my Old Olive. And my, somehow or other, the tip of my Old Olive has been pushed in from someone. Now I'm not going for particularly precise colouring. I'm going for vintage colouring. That's going to be my excuse for lots of things, I think. Get me out of trouble for everything. Just say I'm being artistic. My favourite, absolute favourite artists in the world are the French Impressionists. I have always had a thing for the French Impressionists. And if you have a good look at the French Impressionistic paintings, they show brush strokes. They are not at all graphic in the rendering of their images, but the colour and the light is stunning. And the movement in the imagery is stunning. So I'm always aiming for that sort of gorgeousness. All right, I'll just, oh, I missed a couple of leaves there. Just add some yellow here. So I'm not going, the opposite to French Impressionist paintings is a graphic style, which is what your um, cartoons are. 
um, graphic novels and things like that. And a lot of advertising can be in a graphic style, which is flat, usually flat, smooth color. But as I said, I'm going for artistic and I'm using realistic imagery too with um, my stamps here, which helps me. Anything that has lines already drawn into it is a really great help when you're coloring in because you can actually just draw on top of the lines and all the thinking's done for you. You just have to add color. There we go. That's enough fluffing around there. Now the rose roses. As much as possible, I do try to color each petal individually because it does actually look better than just running your color all over the whole project. Also, when you do each petal, you do leave little bits of uncolored cardstock, which gives you that artistic finish, I believe. Here we go. I like how that turned out. So just using little strokes here, coloring. And this one has so much detail in the image. It, um, it's actually very forgiving. And each petal here, you can see, there we go. And then with my darker flirty flamingo using the bullet tip, I'm just going to try and look for all the super dark pieces in the imagery. and add color there, because that will go where the greatest shadows are. So the concept artist for Stampin' Up! has done all of the thinking and the preparation, created this beautiful quality image that enables us with simply stamps, ink and paper to create stunning works of art. So you could do this too, anyone could do this. You don't actually have to be particularly artistic, you just have to love what you're doing, actually, because then you'll put in a bit more time and care. Probably more than I'm, I am. There we go. And I might just add a bit more to blend some of those little dabs in. That's the beauty of the blender pens. Just add a bit more alcohol, which is what's in the blender the markers and it helps the color all blend in together. Welcome anyone who's joined me today. It's lovely to have you. I'm very excited that you're here. And because we're vintaging up this one, I'm just going to add my blending brush, which already has some of the soft suede ink on it, onto these two all over giving that lovely sepia finish. Okay, there we go. Now we're basically up to putting the card together. Oh, I wonder if I should have put... Hmm, I'm just gonna use the back of this. There we go, just a little bit of time. All right, let's put the inside of the card together first. Some seal on the back of our lovely image there onto the craft cardstock. There we go. That reminds you of those gorgeous old fashioned postcards and greeting cards from the from our grandparents' days. I love how that looks. And I love the encouragement you gave me to try doing the sepia. Okay, now vanilla onto my Soft suede. I'm going to lose that hello if I don't watch out. Whoops. Very, very fine border. Only a little bit bigger. Okay, now I'm going to... This actual project here, I've written about this on my blog. Go and check out my blog at handmadebyjuliaquinn.blogspot. was inspired by a project in the catalogue and a sketch. I posted it last Sunday, so you may have seen it around the ridges. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that great? A bit more 
because it's been softened by embossing it already, it's super easy to rough it up and give it that vintage look. Okay, one, two. Here's my first piece, just there. And then my strip over the side. And I don't even know whether that's up the right way or not. There we go. Nicely done. Oh. And here's something else I should probably add some colour to. Hang on. I'm trying to give a bit more intensity to the actual edge rather than just um, colour the whole thing. So, that way it might look a little bit more 3D. It does have a beveled edge on it because of the um, gorgeous dye. All right, now I use some mini glue dots on that. Uh, no, what are these called? Mini dimensionals on there. Pop you straddling the divide. That was part of the sketch. I would never have thought of splitting splitting two panels like that but it just looks gorgeous when you actually do it okay I need larger dimensionals for you oh there's a practice one I did on the back and skinny dimensionals for you there we go and now let me have a look see what I've done here on this one I've put that little extra element in crumb craft cardstock but I didn't like that um, because it seemed to cover up the nice things this one is at the front as well so when I did this one I changed it I actually used both of them but I think I might put this one down first and then add the other things over the top so to do this one first, I'm going to use a couple of, now I'm using mini glue dots, just mini glue dots behind the foliage there, because it'll get covered up by the other, pro, the other elements of the bouquet. And third one, I haven't got, I should have used my take a picture, okay, so I'll pop that one there and then my rose my feature piece there and then this little one I don't know what these things are called in this flower but they're pretty and put you over there all right almost done now we want to do a linen bow linen thread bow and for using linen thread I like to do doubled over I think it just gives a much more luxurious bow pull you down pull you down there we go and then snip my tails okay and again I'm going to use mini glue dots for my linen thread so I might just put a couple on here and peel you off and you and there we are oh whoops get rid of you and the last thing I put onto it oh actually I better put it on the front of the card hadn't I maybe I'll do that before I put my sequins on I'm going to use my edge pieces here quick and easy. I'm using edge pieces before I use the inside pieces. There we go. And one for this end and then one here, one there. Here we are. Out of the way. Okay. Oh, I've made a huge mess today. Good grief. Let's put you on to the front of the card. And I had the sequins here a second ago. Here they are. 
These are the, um, I don't know what they're called, sequins. They're in the mini catalogue. One there. They're fairly muted, which I thought was nice for the vintage look here. Um, another one up there. So you can't really see them too much. But I just think they look really, there we go. Okay. So there's my fourth card in this collection. Which one is your favourite? Leave a comment and let me know. Those two are the same. So this one is in Calypso Coral. This one's in Flirty Flamingo. This one's in Petal Pink. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to reading your comments. If you want to know more, just let me know and I'll get back to you. Bye-bye now.